Hello you absolute legends and welcome back to creating. In this video, we will talk about five traditions or traditional reference objects in some engineering disciplines. But before that, we would talk just a little bit regarding the need for traditions and why do we as human beings keep coming up with them. After the list, I would talk just a little bit about this bad boy over here. This took me 42 hours to print and three sleepless nights, but I think it turned out all right. At the end, I would highlight some wholesome comments from my previous videos. And with that, let's get started. The psychology of tradition is a bit complex and like anything else in psychology, not entirely understood. As human beings, we are very tribal by nature. We have a primal need to belong to a particular group. Well, this kind of a psychological need does lead to an us and a them view of the world. But as long as it's not an us versus them view of the world, I believe it to be all right. And today we would solely be focusing on the us part of it anyway. We have a tendency of homophily. We seek those who are similar to us. And whether we are related by blood or not, we feel a certain kinship with people who tend to think like we do. It's always a very good feeling when you find out that one of your idols in life has had a habit that you also possess. There's no better way to foster this kind of kinship than to have shared experiences. And by participating in traditions in our particular fields, we pay homage to those who came before us and express a solidarity with our craft. It's like sharing an in-joke between your friends. While most people might associate traditions to religion, that's not the kind of traditions we are taking a look at today. And with that, let's just get started with the list, starting with the one that's probably the closest to my heart. Hello world. This is a common program every newbie coder writes to familiarize himself with the structure of a new programming language. I myself have a degree in computer science and I tend to start with a hello world program every time I'm trying to pick up a new language. It introduces the programmer to the boilerplate code he would be writing over and over again. And for the non-programmers in my audience, boilerplate code is a section of code that you have to write over and over again with relatively little or no change. Every language has some, and even though modern languages have a lot less boilerplate code, a hello world program does a good job of introducing the programmer to the parentheses and the indentation requirements of this language without getting into a lot of complex stuff. Lena. People who have taken up courses in image processing would be all too familiar with this one. This is basically the hello world of image processing. Whatever algorithms you write, they're tested on this image at least once. And it all started back in 1972 when Lena ended up at the centerfold of a Playboy magazine. A few months later, at the University of Southern California's Signal and Image Processing Institute, a team was looking for a test image for their new compression algorithm. This algorithm that we today know as JPEG. Apparently, someone in the team had this centerfold and it has been said that the top thirds of this image was perfect for being a test image because of the complex variety of colors and textures in it. But if I'm being honest with you, I don't think so. It's subjective, but I don't think it's a very vibrant image and I believe they did it just for the kicks. Here, I would like to mention that this has stirred up some controversy from feminist groups and some have dubbed it as text original sin. I would leave some reading material down in the description if you would like to find out more about it. But regardless of anything, Lena is an indelible part of the history and tradition of image processing. The Utah teapot, also called the New L teapot, is a 3D model that has become the standard reference model within the 3D modeling community. Martin Newell, for his research, needed a simple 3D model of a very familiar 3D object. On the suggestion of his wife, he took a teapot from their house. He sketched it freehand on a graph paper using a pencil, and then manually he entered the data into his computer as a set of three-dimensional coordinates. In other words, he basically 3D scanned an object with his eyes and brain, and that is mighty impressive to say the least. Newell made this data publicly available, and since entering coordinates for 3D objects is a very laborious process, other researchers just started to use his model, and the rest is history. 
the Stanford Bunny. This is another model that would be very familiar to those who deal with 3D models. Unlike the Utah teapot, however, this model was actually 3D scanned using 3D scanners and used, along with others, as an object to test methods of range scanning physical objects. It was developed by Greg Turk and Mark Levoy in 1994 at Stanford University. With that, let's get into our last and most awaited candidate, the 3D Benchy. The 3D Benchy is a very popular but proprietary and copyrighted model used to test the capabilities of 3D printers. And I couldn't find it officially anywhere on their website, but Benchy must stand for benchmark, right? Unlike the previous entries on this list, this model wasn't just randomly sourced from anywhere. It was meticulously and carefully created to test almost every capability of a 3D printer. It has many features that their website also proudly mentions, some of which we are going to take a look at right now. The hull itself is a smooth overhanging curved surface that is challenging to 3D print and it reveals any surface deviations. It has a lot of tiny details and cylindrical shapes which are a bit of a challenge to get right on most FDM 3D printers. It has large and small holes all over the body which can sometimes be a problem and this is not an exhaustive list but it also has two areas that require extensive bridging and bridging is always a little bit of a challenge to get right on an FDM 3D printer. With that, the list comes to an end and here I printed a Benchy for myself. I wanted to do something eye-catching to get more clicks so I supersized this to the maximum that my printer can handle and to torture myself I made it multi-material. It took me 42 hours to print in total. I had to keep alarms at an interval of one hour or so. So I could quickly get up and examine and make sure nothing went wrong while printing at night. But it turned out pretty great, barring a little stringing which I took care of with a heat gun and a razor blade. This print had failed once midway due to a clog. So I decided to print at a higher temperature the next time around to, uh, so as to not risk a clog and uh, damage another print. With that, let's move on to the wholesome comment section of this video, my favorite section to be honest. I would like to mention that not all wholesome comments need to be all praise. Constructive criticism is just as important. I would like to mention Severpop. Thank you for not only your suggestions on the tool that I discussed in my last video, you can click on the i button and find it here, but also giving me honest tips on the background music and how I can make my videos better. Initially, the response on my last video was a bit tepid and only my close friends took the time to comment. And it was then that I realized that no other comments can get more wholesome or motivating. Here's a comment from my girlfriend. Fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. I guess I am fire emoji. I generally run my videos by her in the editing phase, so she has mostly always seen the entire video before I publish it on YouTube. Here are three comments from three of my closest friends and they are always a much needed push forward. I'd like to mention my family, my parents and my brother who don't comment on YouTube but are supporting me through a quarter life crisis where I turned from a very well paid software developer to a broke YouTuber. The support from the viewers, friends and family means more than I can put into words and more than I can tell you in one video. I hope my channel keeps growing the way it has uh, in the last two videos. And before we end this video, I would like to mention that I have made an Etsy store, link in the description. If you'd like to buy some Benchy keyrings and put a piece of 3D printing tradition on your keys or bags and support this channel in the process, you can order it there. Currently, I only have shipping within India, which is where I'm based. And it anyway wouldn't make much sense for the international viewers to be importing a Benchy keyring. If you'd like to find Create Ink on Instagram, the handle is right in front of you. And with that, we come to the end of another video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, the other one is fine. Please leave any comments and critiques that you might have in the comment section down below. It really helps me a lot. Hit subscribe for more original and innovative content. And until next time, just keep building.